Welcome to the final closing session of Cyber Exchange 3.0. What a what an experience this has been. Uh, you know, several months ago, uh, we were sitting around as a team and we were we were thinking about how do we innovate and how do we make changes in the way sessions are done and events are done. And and I take everyone back to pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, we would get ready in the morning. You would grab your coffee. You would head downtown to a particular hotel. You park. You'd meet people on the way, you'd smile, and you would attend sessions. And, and these sessions had panelists sitting. You would then at some point walk into the, the booth area. You would, you would throw your business cards in a few places, looking to win something, but at the same time, engaging, networking. And, and the world changed. And our last event that we held was uh, Canadian Women in Cybersecurity, which was in March of 2020 at the Weston Harbor Castle. And and during and this was in March, in mid-March, and as the event was happening, the world was shutting down, and 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 it was a unique time. As soon as the world shut down, CyberX as an organization said, "Hey, what are we going to do?" And we launched Cyber Exchange 1.0 in May of 2020. We had over 10,000 people attend. Our team went to Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls was empty. The hotel Sheridan by the Falls there, empty. This was the first time putting on an event. Uh, there was about six of us in, 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 in fear because there was a pandemic. We didn't know what was happening. I remember um, holding my breath in every time I walked by someone. And, and, and we put on a really cool event, Cyber Exchange 1.0. And after that, we learned a lot. We learned about the behaviors of people. We learned about the behaviors of our sponsors. We learned about the behaviors of the participants. We learned a lot. And, and one of the things that we took away after holding several of other events after that was you can't take a circle and try to put it through a square. And that is what people were trying to do post COVID when it came to events. And so when we were sitting around about four or five months ago, and, and we said, you know, Cyber Exchange 3.0, we got to do it different. Um, there was a few people that were in that meeting and, and gave great advice. And I won't mention their names because they're, they're humble and, and I know they wouldn't want me to mention their names. However, our thought process was, and I sit in a unique position, was we have our sponsors, great partners. And a lot of times, what they're looking to do is help the community. And a lot of times organizations um, sometimes take that negatively when a sales rep calls them. But what they don't realize is that sales rep that's calling them or that organization that's calling them has a solution to a problem. On the flip side, you then have organizations and you have organizations with all these amazing challenges and problems that requires solutions to it. And guess what? The ecosystem requires both of them to work together. So we said, let's start Cyber Exchange 3.0, the challenge statement. And with that, our hashtag rose, which was called Rise, uh, Rise to the Challenge. Yes, that is correct. It's been a long week, as you can, uh, as you can tell. <laughs> and our thought process was to allow organizations to tell us what their problems were. So we went out, we went out to the government, we went out to the banks, we went out to critical infrastructure, we went out to healthcare, we went out to uh, education. And we went to these organizations and these CIOs and CISOs and CTOs and CFOs and CEOs and senior levels. And we said, tell us your problems. And, and they came back with hundreds and hundreds of challenges that they're facing. We took that, we try to bring it as, as close as possible to what's relevant today. And then what we did is we had an amazing advisory board and the advisory board combed through those, uh, fixed them up, made them what they are, and we presented them. Now, along the way, we went to the organizations, the, the, the enterprise, the, the service providers, the MSSPs, the, the consultants, and we said, do you have a solution to this problem? And guess what? They did. And over five days with Cyber Exchange 3.0, we displayed those solutions. 
Now, uh, one of the things that we're going to do today is we're just going to do a quick overview and a, and a takeaway from our esteemed advisory board. Uh, just to introduce them, we have Daniel Pinsky, who uh, graciously uh, was the chair of the advisory board for Cyber Exchange 3.0. We also have our co-chairs on as well, Helen Oakley and Karen Amani. And just to sort of take it away and, and, and start this off, I will, I will pass this over to Karen. Karen, please tell me a little bit about what you learned and some of the takeaways that you saw during this week. Absolutely. I'm actually gonna build first on what you said uh, in your opening statement about solutions. Um, I recently came across a quote that a friend posted uh, by Albert Einstein having said uh, that says, stay away from negative people. They have a problem for every solution. Mm -hmm. And as someone who's worked in cybersecurity for 20 something years, I think we can all say that uh, we run the risk of being the purveyors of problems, right? Um, and what I learned along the way is that uh, we can't live in fear, uncertainty, and doubt. We can't drive security with fear, uncertainty, and uncertainty and doubt. We need to enable organizations enable the people that we work with um, and come up with solutions. So I love this topic and I love the approach and I got really excited. But as I said at the very beginning of the week, I was worried that we would do a product demo um, and that we would have people coming and saying, I want a silver bullet solution, show it to me how it works. But we didn't do that. We did better. You know, we recognize the context. I have like a list of themes that came out from financial services talking about, um, you know, the pandemic end doesn't mean to an, an end to our risk. We are going to be risk managing all the COVID issues going forward. But there are solutions. There's automation. There's looking at your intelligence. It's it was really exciting to focus on the dialogue and look at all people process solutions uh, that we saw there. And I do want to say that um, for me, things like trust but verify were themes that I think people should take away. Security and privacy being a business imperative. Things like it's a posture. And I'll just end with my favorite, favorite line of the week, which was, and I will give him credit because it's <laughs> quoting him, um, Matthew Balser uh, of Sentinel, Sentinel One, and apologies if I don't say your name right, but you said the line, don't dump data, dump mm -hmm. context. And I've got to say, I live that. And I'm so glad that you shared that because that's what people need to take away. The con the solution needs to fit your context. So. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, absolutely, very powerful. Uh, uh, let's pass it over to Helen. Uh, why don't you set this up? Yeah, I, I hope my connection is not gonna break. I just <laughs> some issues. Um, it's at it's poor. Uh, anyway, what else can go wrong, right? Uh, we had a full week of excited, uh, exciting uh, sessions. And like Karen said, it was uh, such a different format. I really enjoyed uh, my data was looking for was education. I'm very passionate about this topic. I mean, I'm interested in all of them. And there were many interesting sessions um, and interesting ideas and how the problems are being solved. But for education, I'll tell you this, when even you can maybe watch some of the recordings that I did, but when I do a Google dork during my hacking session and I look for unsecure login pages, uh, guess what comes up first? Educational facilities. What a surprise, right? Um, a good point being mentioned today that I really like hearing that when there's... Um, they're not only proposing their solutions, but they also encouraging each other to help uh, educational facilities to solve these problems, right? They're encouraging, uh, uh, providing more affordable, perhaps uh, training, uh, supporting um, the, uh, their customers in training their tools. Because one thing is to buy an expensive tool, right? And another thing is to actually learn. And it's very important to educate the staff. Uh, and, you know, that if the encouragement for the university facilities or educational facilities to continue 
educating your own staff in a cybersecurity because this is how you will be able to equip yourself. However, um, I uh, remember uh, uh, a few things, of course, automation, uh, things like automating your own processes, you know, how to protect your endpoint devices. I'm talking about endpoint devices as a session. Um, it's definitely, um, if you're going to leave it to your own um, to your own team, uh, you probably will fall behind. So this is a very good point that um, in order to stay up to date in all the protection for all the endpoint devices, right? Um, you need to take um, um, take opportunity of available automation out there. And I cannot um, not mention the last session with Daniel. Oh my God, that's the whole session was with put that on your t-shirt, right? I love that. I loved all the leadership comments um, and, you know, everything that we um, we ask people to do, you know, growth for comfort cannot cause this. I want to put this on my cup. <laughs> Daniel, <laughs> I, I want to take it to you. Like, what is your impression um, from this, um, the whole, the whole um, conference this week? Uh, thank you for that. I, I So at the, at the beginning of the week in the opening session, um, I said I thought our goal was to solve real problems with real solutions in real time. And I think we did that. If I look at all the sessions that I attended over the last five days um, and the collaboration and the communication between um, various areas of the communities, I, I really think we did that. Um, and so I'm ecstatic. I, I was an incredible experience for me. Um, working with the people, like I said, working with the people at CyberX, working with Karen and, and Helen and Maddie, it was absolutely an experience that I'm never going to for, forget. Um, and I just think it was it was just amazing all around. Um, for me, like all the days I found really, really interesting. Obviously, that one day that really piqued my interest was the critical infrastructure. Um, that was my favorite day, um, specifically the trust, but verify the how AI can co combat insider threats effectively. Uh, by Dark Trace, I thought it was a fantastic session. I came away from that session uh, going back to my team, telling them we need to get Dark Trace. Um, so I, I really thought that was uh, an amazing session and probably the one that I enjoyed the most. Often the greatest cyber threat to an organization is not malware or cyber criminal gangs but instead trusted insiders with Absolutely. data and systems. I mean, um, that, that says it all, right? That, that was actually a very powerful session. And I know Helen, you brought up, uh, and, and Karen, you brought up uh, Sentinel One as well with Matthew, Matthew being a very powerful speaker. Uh, you know, hats off on, on Financial Day where we had, this was really unique. And I would love to get your guys' thoughts on this. On the opening talk show, we have Sentinel One, Recorded Future, Cloud Entity, and, and then we have some three powerful speakers from there, right? Matthew, Nathaniel, and John, uh, along with uh, Leila as well, and Ali moderating that. It was, for me, it was very unique to see three vendors that have three unique products sitting and, and working together and chatting together. That, to me, was, I mean, you guys are on the other side of the, of the, of the table, uh, from open text to SAP to, to CDW, and I know you're not speaking on behalf of your organization, but how did that feel? I loved it, I'll, uh, if you guys don't mind. Um, I think that it was also mentioned in with Leila and Trish later as well. Uh, they brought up the point of collaboration. Um, and I often find it's a beautiful thing to bring various perspectives together and see what comes out of them because you can always find something new. And I felt that that's what I was seeing in those conversations. They made me excited for the rest of the day and to dive deep and see what was going to happen. So I fully love that piece. Yeah. And if you could see, if you could do something different there, um, you know, Helen or, or, or Daniel, what would it, what would that be? And, and what did you like about that? I, I really enjoyed collaboration. I think it's, it's amazing because um, that's what our community needs. That's what our tech uh, industry needs for vendors to collaborate. And, you know, even looking at <laughs> uh, 
similar products when they're collaborating. I, I think it's a really great way of solving the challenge and providing the solution, right? Uh, making the best out of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have much to add. Uh, I, I, I would agree with everything that was said. I think we did a good job of shifting the focus uh, off the vendors into the problem and the eventual solution. And I think that's what we set out to do at, at the beginning. And I think we did achieve that. Yeah, speaking, of, <laughs> speaking of that, what we have achieved, um, so I know we had all high expectations, right? I had a high expectations and I, they are really fulfilled mine. Um, Maddie, what about you? Um, yeah. Did this uh, conference fulfill your expectations? Um, the, the conference is, uh, we have a checklist and, and we haven't sent out our survey and we will be sending out our survey to quantify that checklist, but we do it. We, we have a checklist and the checklist is really, and, and I'm a transparent person. Uh, you know, we're putting on events. Uh, we have to satisfy three different types of people uh, for this event. Number one is the attendees. Those of you that are watching, you need to take away from this event. Did we learn something? Uh, did our life improve? Was it, was, was the audio good? Was the, was the internet good? Was, was the presentation good? So you have that checklist. Then you have checklist number two, and those are the ones that are paying. Those are your sponsors, which I officially now call partners. Uh, I want to move away from that word sponsor because I think that's very pre-COVID that they're sponsors. They're actually partners because, um, yes, they are the ones that are paying, but the reason why they're paying is to get your product out there uh, and, and to educate the community. So number two is, you are your sponsors happy? Uh, number three is the organization's the ecosystem. So you get feedback from uh, the, the ecosystem from people from all walks of life saying, was this good or not? And, and that ecosystem is your, your C-suites, your, your those that are becoming C-suites. Uh, and then number four, the most important one is the advisory board. Uh, I say most important because you are the leaders in this. It's with your support that we're able to really navigate through uncharted waters and because this was a first event, I'll tell you this much, Helen, uh, is uh, we've gotten three types of feedback. Number one, from our partners who sponsored the event, um, they've come back and said, oh my God, this was great. We've already started connecting with people. Um, we were able to talk about our product. Uh, we were able to demo our product without actually demoing our product. We were able to talk about it, real life solutions and challenges. Uh, number two, from those that have attended. I've been receiving messages saying, awesome setup, great, I learned a lot, I was able to dial in. For me, financial services was important, I was able to listen to that. Or for me, education was important, I was able to listen to that. Uh, and then number three is, 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 is the advisory board, which is, which is you guys along with the rest of the 20 amazing individuals uh, that, that will then hopefully give us our feedback next Friday. Uh, that's that's so great. Um, and I'm looking forward to those infographics, right? Um, those are awesome. It's such a highlight. Um, I really love them. And I also got already personal feedback uh, in um, uh, direct messages, uh, uh, messages that it was amazing. People really enjoyed and learned a lot from it. And yeah, I agree with you on the on the advisory board, um, a little bit maybe how we were preparing. Um, so aside of the whole advisory and getting the feedback, pulling everybody together, uh, we had a separate uh, smaller rounds, right, with Karen, Daniel and Ali, um, just to work through the details. I mean, I enjoyed working with you guys. Um, um, folks, let's be inclusive. <laughs> I, 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 I really alone. enjoyed uh, yeah, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm also guilt. It's a, it's a habit, right? Uh, but we are getting better at it. So um, I wanted to say thank you for you, uh, for you too, for your inputs. And I'm definitely looking forward for the next one, next event, whenever that's going to be. And I know, I know that there will be a next year for that all. Um, maybe Maddie can provide a little bit of insight on that in a few moments. Um, unless uh, maybe Karen and Daniel have something to add on advisory board or else. Yeah, I, you know what, I, I think, uh, and Ali's not here at the moment, I, I think a special shout out should really go to him. Uh, Maddie, mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about the advisory board and you're talking about um, the vendors and those are the pieces. 
I really see kind of Maddie as that, sorry, Ali as, as that glue that kind of binds all those pieces together into the tapestry that was the conference. Uh, he just did a phenomenal job. Um, and I'm pretty sure I could speak for all of us is I learned tons from him. I think he's a, he's a professional, he's a gentleman, and he's absolutely fantastic at what he does. Um, so if you're out there and you're listening and you're watching, Ali, um, from the bottom of my heart, I, I thank you for your service. Absolutely. I, and thank I you, Ali. <laughs> thank you. Uh, and, um, you know, and I very quickly want to just touch on a, a couple of other days. Uh, so, you know, July the 13th, we had government services. And, and Daniel, I know you alluded to Dark Trace, uh, but we did also have IBM. Uh, where they talked about cyber resiliency and, and for the critical infrastructure, which was which was very powerful. Um, and as well, one of the other cool things that we did on, on Tuesday was we had a, a session called Defending a Crown Facility Amidst a, amidst a Cyber Attack. And, and there we had some really, we had Mark, we had uh, Kush, we had Sultanet, we had Dave, we had Daniel, not you, Daniel, but the other Daniel. And um, we ran a, a tabletop exercise, uh, gamification. And what was unique and what was interesting is Daniel is a, uh, an older gentleman, um, like, like, like a grandfather, just a cuddly, amazing person. But one <laughs> thing he does is um, he's been there, done that. Yeah. He's not one of those people that, hey, I study cybersecurity and that's it. He's been in through thick and thin. He's been at uh, various situations where, you know, from an OT standpoint, crazy stuff has happened. And when he ran the tabletop and, and the sessions that he's been listening to on critical infrastructure, um, his response to me was, this was amazing. Uh, this is exactly what the cybersecurity community needs. Um, moving over to, uh, to, to critical services, and I know this was something, Daniel, that, that you liked with, with Darktrace and Juniper. Um, did you have a chance to catch the uh, Juniper session on establishing a critical infrastructure protection plan at all? Uh, unfortunately, I didn't. Uh, however, I did catch the gamification you're referring to with Daniel. Yeah. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed watching it. I, what I can say is I can echo your sentiment. Daniel is a, he's a wise, he's very, very wise. He's been there and he's done that. And I'm sure every gray hair is, is, is an incident. Uh, that much I'll say. <laughs> nice one. Uh, and then, and then, as well on the, on that day of critical, we also dealt with uh, Iron Cap. And what was really unique with Iron Cap, and I had a conversation with Beverly today, so shout out to Beverly and Andrew. Uh, when it comes to quantum computing, um, on uncharted territory, right? Not a lot of people know about it. And what was interesting, what Andrew was saying was he was standing in the middle of I don't know. Correct me if I'm, I'm sorry, Andrew, if I got the wrong. Uh, it was either Beijing. Um, or, or a, a capital in Hong Kong. I forgot what it was. But anyways, he was standing there in the middle, kind of like Young and Dundas, if you want to call it that. And when he looked around, he saw every building occupied by uh, an organization that's involved in, in quantum computing and, and how, how far it's gone in Asia. And when it comes to Canada, for example, um, there's not a lot of uh, investment in time in learning about that. So that was, a, that was a pretty cool session. I don't know if you guys were able to catch any of that. Nope, but I can tell you that once you upload to the on <laughs> that'll be a session that I will be on the hunt for. And and I, I, yeah, talking about uploading, um, like for everybody out there, when will those be available, Maddie? Great question. And this is the uh, beauty of online events. And uh, we're, we're busy. We have so many things to do. Online events become a secondary tab. Uh, there's Zoom fatigue. There's, uh, you know, how many sessions are you going to attend uh, all year? Uh, and one of the great things with Cyber Exchange is we built an on-demand platform uh, where it allows you to actually search. So if you just go to on-demand, you can pull, I think we have close to about 15 terabytes of, of video uh, from, from, you know, three, four years ago. So we will be posting our on-demand uh, sometime in the first week of August uh, 2021. And then it will be readily available. I know there'll be a lot of people that will be watching those sessions and, and giving a lot of feedback on that. So we are excited about that. Uh, and just to end off here with healthcare, uh, again, with healthcare, we were um, one of the great organizations is Juniper. And I want to do thank uh, Dugan uh, for, for that opportunity. They really stepped up. And, and if you look at uh, healthcare as, as a session, Juniper was all over that. And again, this is a telltale sign of organizations when we sent them the challenges uh 
some did get stand up and some when they heard that you know other organizations were on stepped away and said wait this is not our space uh so hats off to juniper for coming out and and talking about how to protect your endpoints and how to automate your uh you know the the detection on evolving attacks so that was really awesome the other one that was really fun uh and i don't know if you were able to catch this was with jill clayton um ali and uh, ritesh and ali muhammad on light medical uh, talking about securing patient data online. I don't know if you guys caught that one. If you did, I did. it, yeah. What did you think? Yeah, about- um, I love that. You know that conversation. Uh, there were some really great pieces of information Jill Clayton provided on breach information and stats. But the best part was just them talking about putting the patients and users at the center mm. um, and looking at the. Uh, how you establish trust in those environments and how you um, secure your endpoints with like when your attack surface, like all of ours has, but in their case with highly confidential and critical uh, information. So there was some uh, really great pieces about automating and about endpoint protection that uh, came out. I'll also say though, the other piece that um, and this is why I'm probably going a bit really high level is because on the down, uh, like at the detailed level, I couldn't help but notice. And it was it Kate is her name from Juniper yep, who Kate. brought up diversity. So I'm going to take a moment and just say uh, she talked a bit in her opening session about um, how diversity uh, brings innovation and creativity. And I love that. And she also put in a plug for the Diana, Diana Initiative conference that's happening this weekend. That's only five bucks. So I thought I would just amplify her voice a bit um, because she's she was very great. <laughs> There's a yeah for any of anyone that is watching live the Diana Initiative. I you know that was my first time coming across it. What an amazing initiative! Uh, you know it's just it's it's remarkable. So for those that are watching live, please do uh, you know I think just Google Diana Initiative or and, and you'll be able yeah. to be able to find that um you know and and the last session uh, or the last day that we had uh we had sentinel one i know uh helen you've already uh given a shout out to to, to matthew there but we did also have phelps Cybersecurity uh with zena who from our marketing team this was her first uh first uh kick at the can who did a phenomenal job and 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 daniel what what better combination i i, I really enjoyed that session uh and you know, speaking of quotes, uh, my favorite, I don't know if you guys remember, when we first started off, we had everyone say a quote on the advisory call several months ago. And uh, as the event has gone on, uh, there's a quote by Tony Robinson, identify your problems, but give your power and energy to the solutions. Mm. And that that's great for business. That's great for life. That's great for family. That's great for the world we're in right now. Right. We got a problem, um, you know, instead of focusing your power and energy on that problem, come up with a solution. Right. Focus your energy on a solution. So just some key key. Uh, what I wanted to do is pass the mic around for just some final thoughts uh, before we uh, conclude our closing session today. So I'll start off with uh, Daniel. Um. For me, it was, my final thoughts are it was just an amazing experience. And again, I'm thankful for everybody that I've worked with at CyberX, for all the advisors, certainly Helen and Karen, yourself and Ali. Um, and it was, it was just something I'm always going to remember. I'll leave it at that. Very sweet. Very sweet thing to say. Uh, thank you very much, Daniel. Uh, we'll take it over to, to Helen. Thank you, Maddie. And uh, I think the most uh, important that we all learn something from this uh, conference, um, even if you know in general how certain things work and solutions, we did learn. And I think it's one of the important uh, points. And I want to quote Daniel from his last session. Um, I really liked leadership is a choice, not a position. So let's remember that. I, I really liked it. It's, it's deep. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe now, Karen, to you. And I can now say thank you all um, for giving me the opportunity to be part of an amazing experience like this one. Um, I will also add 
Ali and a shout out for, I've learned so much from all of you and I learned so much from this conference. Um, and I love the fact that we're all forward looking in terms of our problem solving uh, with a view to solutions. Um, and I also wanna say that my, my other, the last final theme that I kept getting from all of the sessions was that security is a cultural mindset. And we need to take it and embed that mindset in all everything we do these days, especially post pandemic, as we go forward and, you know, interact with technology so much more freely, um, that you want to have a mindset that just asks some really good questions like people did this week. And, and like I say, cybersecurity is a lifestyle, right? It's yeah. not just yeah. a job. Um, but maybe before we close, Maddie, I wanted to ask you, what can we expect from next year for that all? Because I'm already looking forward to that. Another amazing week of, uh, or I don't know, um, events. Yeah, so our next Any event ideas? that we have, the, the next event that my <laughs> wife has allowed me to, to cover is Cyber, <laughs> is Cecil Forum in November. Uh, we're, you know, obviously we're in Ontario. So those listening live on July the 16th, Currently, we don't know. We don't. I mean, we we're, we're hoping a physical event, but after speaking to people, they're nervous and so on and so forth. So we'll, we'll we, we've done hybrid events. So it'll either be online or physical or hybrid uh, to be determined. However, you know, after looking at this sort of format, uh, you know, going back to a, a regular format just doesn't excite me and 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 to my team. So we're we're trying to figure out something where we can hybrid that concept, which is the old way and the new way uh, for our CISO forum to, to really have a solutions and, and, and real life solutions. And let's deal with them on the spot. Uh, let's not just talk about stuff and then go away and repeat and regurgitate facts. Let's talk about what's happening right now mm -hmm. um, and, and solve those uh, with solutions. So uh, CISO forum is our next one. Uh, we do have our Canadian women in cybersecurity, which is a personal um, close to the heart event. In, in March uh, during uh, women, uh, Women's um, International uh, Women's Day. Yeah, yeah, we have that. And then we have a bunch of events. We're, we're sort of in a cloud because who knows what's going to happen in the future, right? So we're, we're staying positive. That's the, that's the key. Let's say a little bit paranoid, but positive. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask well, whether 4.0 was going to have different sectors and different industries, no? like small, medium business, nonprofit, like mm. who, like they have different challenges. I think that's uh, like one session I need to watch is the cloud inequity, because I think that is uh, a factor uh, that uh, we need to know more about. And understand better. It, it's such a big one, especially for our SMBs, right? I, I don't know if people know this, but Canada's SMB population is about 98.4%. So just Google it, SMB, percentage of SMBs in Canada. And if my percentage is wrong, I know it's around the 96 to 98% of our SMB. Yes. Uh, hmm. Canada is established based on hard work of Canadians. Um, a very small segment of that is enterprise. And with all due respect, enterprise being a very important foundation to, to Canada, but it's our SMBs. It's our, you know, people that have, you know, 10, 15 employees that, or, or 70 employees, a small shop, they imagine what would happen to them if they went down, right? After this pandemic, a blow to their business. Now imagine if, uh, you know, they lost all their data, woke up one morning and husband and wife are just staring at each other going, how are we going to pay the 20 employees we have who are relying on us? So the, the threat is real. Absolutely. I, I think that would be really interesting uh, to Karen's point as an idea to focus on SMB and what are the challenges for those organizations specifically. I think they're very different to your point, Maddie, uh, because they're smaller. Obviously, they don't have the revenue to buy a lot of the blinky boxes. Um, we'd have to almost um, approach the challenges from a very different mindset. And because of that, we may end up coming up with very innovative solutions. So I think that would be really interesting. That's a good one, Karen. That's for our, our, our call next week when we when we have uh, different <laughs> devices. That might be, and I hope the CyberX team is That's listening. That's a good one. 
Yeah. yeah, that's a very good one is really drumming down different type of SMBs because to this point, and I would love your guys' thoughts on it. I mean, the dentist that, you know, has got four or five employees, very critical business yep. uh, versus the law, law firm that's got, you know, nine, uh, nine lawyers working, uh, you know, for family law down to the small insurance company, down to the guy that that amazing man sitting on a boat right now in Vancouver who does printing ink supplies. Right. And, and how that, how something like this can really impact their life and technically generations to come even because their employees can, can really be affected by this. So very, very important point, uh, Karen, you brought up. So um, if the advisory board, the esteemed advisory board does not have any more questions for, for me, I I think we can uh, it's Friday at six o'clock. Um, we can we can conclude this with your permission if that's okay. Yes, it's been an exciting and long week. Absolutely, but it's time to have some rest over the weekend, especially your team, Maddie. Yes, you worked. I think you worked okay. days and nights. Yeah. yeah thank thank you. you for all you've done. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you to the rest of the cyber exchange team. Mm-hmm. They did an amazing job as well. Everyone oh. who is behind the video, behind the screens right now. Uh, I I can only imagine. Yeah, and I want to I want to do a special shout out to our CyberX team, uh, Jordan, uh, Adi, Shrey, uh, Zainab, Farwa, Miracle, um, all of your work. You know, everyone had an objective. Everyone did it and and well executed. So um, you know, thank you. Honors to you, uh, to our attendees, to those that listened and watched. We had some lifers. Uh, that love cyber exchange and just watched it for, you know, for five days. Thank you to those that just tuned in for, for 30 seconds or five minutes, just to show love and support because we know life is busy. Thank you. Uh, so thank you very much to those that attended and supported uh, helping cybersecurity in Canada, really uh, to our advisory board. Uh, there's a bunch of you uh, that I, I don't have the opportunity nor the time to say all of your names, but we do have a special gift for you uh, next Friday uh, to really show our appreciation. Uh, this is something you do out of love. Uh, this is something you do uh, for, for the for the people. And, and it's really nice to have your um, your support to you three. Um, Daniel, you know, stepping up and, and taking that, that, that chair. I was listening to your last session. Uh, when you did come up to me, I remember, actually, we were running a gamification. We kept seeing Daniel Pinsky. And I'm like, Who's this Daniel? <laughs> I'm the one every single time. Who's this guy? And at someone point, he goes, he's sitting in the front. And I looked and I was like, oh, that guy. So, um, you know, and fr- from there, three years ago, you just, you know, we, we our, our relationship that's built up. So thank you. And I'm honored. Helen, um, what do I say to you? I mean, uh, you've been uh, a great support and, and a great help and, 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 and just everything. I mean, you know what you do. So thank you. Uh, for, for being a co-chair on this. It was very valuable. Karen, we talked about this pre-call. Uh, I'm glad you were on board here. Um, and both of you ladies, um, you know, Helen running the LCL, leading cyber ladies, and, and Karen with WESIS. Uh, again, an important, Ontario, yeah. Yeah, an important, both important organizations to, to, for, for all of those out there, women, men, um, everyone. Uh, to, to, you know, look at these great organizations, these nonprofits to support them. Uh, so thank you very much to our advisory board. Last but not least, to our partners. I, I do want to send a special, special, special shout out to uh, Iron Cap, to, to Phelps Cybersecurity, to Juniper. Uh, thank you to East Entire, to Recorded Future, to Sentinel One, to Cloudentity, to Darktrace, and, and to IBM. Um, it is with your support we are able to put on these events. It is with your belief in us that we're able to put on events. And we look forward to continuously serving you and, and providing you that platform very much needed uh, as you are an integral part of the ecosystem. And, and to uh, the organizations out there that responded back and provided us with all this information, thank you to our volunteers. Thank you. Um, I would like to officially close Cyber Exchange 3.0 uh, for the team. Enjoy your weekend, everyone. And we will see you Monday, 8 a.m. I'm joking. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.